Here we go. Again, I hope you guys are doing well. I don't know, I think you guys are all positioned well for this test coming up. We've gone through all the materials. They cut out some sections. I posted that if you haven't seen that yet. So it's not going to be covering volumes of revolution, that whole section, and the velocity, position, acceleration stuff. But here we go. Let's keep on working hard. Let's get through this. So I want to highlight some things. The parts highlighted, you should be actually writing down. So we're starting with no snow at midnight. You know what? Let me just go ahead and write that. At t equals zero. I'm going to do let a of t equal the amount of snow on the driveway. So at t equals zero, a equals zero. Or I could just rewrite that as a of zero is zero. So we know we're starting with no snow. So from midnight to nine, snow accumulates at a rate. So this is a derivative. So I'm gonna put that in my calculator as y1. Now if you wish, you could do this. Maybe not necessary on this problem because this is the only function we have, but I'll just go ahead and write that down. And t is the time since midnight. So we're good on that. Janice starts to remove snow at 6 o'clock. So she gets up in the morning, there's snow on her driveway, and she starts to shovel the snow or somehow get rid of the snow. And the rate g of t is how fast she's removing snow. So if you look, she's removing zero from zero to six. So midnight to 6 a.m., she's sleeping most likely, and she's not doing anything, so there's snow building up. But then at six in the morning, she realizes, hey, I gotta clear my driveway. So this is the rate for one hour at which she removes snow. And we see that the rate is given in cubic feet per hour. So every hour, she removes 125 cubic feet for that hour. And that's a constant rate. Some of you, again, might be bothered that's not a cosine or a log or x squared or something. All that is still a function, but it's constantly 125 cubic feet per hour for the whole time. And then something happens after an hour. I am going to assume she gets tired. She starts slowing down. And for the next two hours, she only does 108 cubic feet per hour. So that's kind of what this function tells us here. That's what's going on. And so let's get to the heart of the question. Part A, how many cubic feet of snow have accumulated on the driveway by 6 a.m.? So there's no snow to start with. So basically, we want A at 6. But let me back up here. Before we get that, well, I can do it up here. We want a function for the amount of snow on the driveway. And again, I should give myself some room. I will do it here. So the amount of snow at any time is the start plus the amount added minus the removed. So we already know we start with zero. Okay, so for the whole midnight to 9 a.m., the whole nine hours, it's falling 
at the rate f of t. So to find out how much snow has fallen, you integrate the rate at which the snow falls. And I am going to put f of x, because t is taken already. So I can change that variable to whatever I want. Minus, now the amount removed is kind of weird. I'm going to go from 0 to t, g of t, because that's her rate removing. But that function changes over different time periods, so we might have to break that up. So a of 6, that's going to be our starting amount, which is 0. You don't have to put that. I'm just going to write that down. And then the amount of snow that has fallen would be the integral from 0 to 7 of y1 of, you know what, let's just put f of t, so I don't confuse you, minus the amount of snow taken away, so why did I put 7, my, 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 Yoshida, what is wrong with you? Now, this becomes a pretty easy problem because... You should notice, well, I'll go ahead and write it down. G of t, if you look, g of t from 0 to 6, it's right here. It's 0. So basically, she's not removing anything. So I don't even need this, but if I put a 0 dt, because g of t is 0, basically, that's not even needed. So I just have to integrate that. So that's going to give me the first answer. I'm going to pop that in my calculator. I already have the function put in. I do math 9 from 0 to 6 of my y1 that I put in there. I get the magic number, 142.274, or... 142.274 cubic feet per, I'll well, just cubic feet. Or if you want to truncate 142 point, or round up, I should say, truncate is 0 0.274, round it off is 0.275. So that is our first answer for part A. Part B, find the rate of change of the volume of snow. So let me erase all of this stuff. And I want to highlight something. The rate of change, when you see that, in your brain, hopefully you see derivative. That is, find the derivative of the volume of snow on the driveway at 8 a.m. So what's the amount of snow? We have the formula for the amount of snow, but we want the derivative of that. So we want a prime of t. This is part b. So if you look back, here's what we have to look at. We're taking the derivative of this right here. But if you look at that, we're taking the derivative of an integral from a constant to t. Again, the fundamental theorem of calculus says if we take the derivative from a constant to our variable, because it's respect to time, our variable here is t. That's t here. So all we have to do is plug it in right there. So that gives us f of t. And similarly, g of t. And I kind of messed up here because these here should be x's. Whoa, too much stuff's disappearing. g of x dx. This driveway, my beautiful writing. All right, so we just want the derivative at 8 a.m. 
So that's just a prime of eight, which is just f of eight minus g of eight. So in my calculator, I'm just gonna find f of eight, which is just y one of eight in the calculator, minus g of eight. Now, the g of eight, we can just look here. G of eight is gonna be gotten from that. That's just 108. So y one of eight, I'm gonna plug that in my calculator just like I have it on my paper there. So that's going to be 48.417. And I'm going to subtract that 108. And I get negative 59.582 or... Uh, I guess you noticed I got a phone call right there. Um, 59.583, if we round off the previous one, if we truncate. So that's part B. Make sure you read the question. Find the rate or the derivative of the volume of the snow, dry weight AM. You don't have to have units. If you want to have units, it's cubic feet per hour. Cubic feet per hour. All right, let's go to the next question. Let me see. H of T represents the total amount of snow in cubic feet that Jan has removed from the driveway. Express H as a piecewise function with domain zero to nine. Okay, this is the one that's gonna blow your minds because you really don't know what it's asking for. Maybe you do. The piecewise function is kind of weird. But basically, we want the amount of snow removed at any particular time. So H of T, this is going to be pretty easy for the first six hours. From zero to six, it's a constant rate of zero. She's removed zero. So if you want a function that tells you how much snow she's removed, that's just going to be zero for the first six hours. Now, for six to seven, here's what we need to do. Let me do some side work. The amount removed is you integrate her rate from 6 o'clock to T hours, T being between 6 and 7. Her rate is 125. It's constant. That is the function dt. And technically, we don't need calculus on this. It's just the amount of time times her rate, 125, since it's constant. But... The antiderivative of 125 is 125t. I, 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 we need to do x, sorry. x from 6 to t, plug in t, 125t, plug in 6, 125 times 6. We're going to factor out the t, the 125. We get t minus 6. Now, this should make total sense to you. Because 125 is the rate. That's how many cubic feet she removes per hour. And then, say at 630, how long has she been doing this? From 6 to 630, you would subtract the time minus 6, and that will give you how long she was removing the snow. So multiplying the rate times the time, should give you the total amount of snow she removed in that time period. So at this point, 
it's going to be 125 t minus 6. And that's for any time between 6 and 7. Now, for the last section, 7 to 9, here's where it gets a little bit stranger. So, to find the amount of snow, it's going to be the amount of snow removed up to 6 hours plus the change in the amount of snow from, oh, wow, actually 7, I messed that up. I will explain what's going on here. 7 to T, and at the rate of 108 dx. So that's going to be H of T. So this is actually fundamental theorem. The previous one, we did a fundamental theorem, you just didn't realize it, because 0 to 6, she removed nothing. So we just ignored that. But if we wanted a time between 7 and 9, we can figure out how much snow was removed from 7 to any time t between 7 and 9. That just gives you the amount of snow removed in that time period. But you also have to start with how, many snow, how much snow she already removed, which is h of 7. But if you see, this is just fundamental theorem of calculus. This is the starting amount, and this is the change in the amount. And so that gives you the total amount. So what is h of 7? You can just plug in 7 right there, and you use a 125. Because clearly in that hour, she removes 125 per hour, and she worked for an hour, so it's 125. And if you find the antiderivative of this and plug in t, plug in 7, you're going to get 108 t minus 7. So again, t minus 7 is the amount of time since 7 that she's been removing snow times by the rate of 108. So we're going to get this, 125 plus 108 t minus 7. And that is the answer. That's our piecewise function. All right, let's do par D. Par D is going to be pretty easy because I will show you why. Par D, we want to find out the amount of snow at what time? Nine. So we need to find out how much snow has fallen, because our start amount is zero. We're going to use that formula, this formula here. Okay, so integral from zero to nine of the rate at which snow has fallen minus, now, we can integrate g of t, but we have this formula here now for how much snow she's removed. So that's going to be h of nine. So in our calculator, we're going to plug in that integral. And h of 9 is going to be 9. Let me highlight it. It's this. But plug in 9. So that's going to be 125 plus 108, 9 minus 7. And then I do that integral, put it all together. Let me do the integral first. So I'm going to do math 9, 0 to 9 of my function. I get 367.334 or 5, depending if you round or truncate. So I'm going to subtract that. Technically, we're done. But for those of you who like a concise answer... I'm going to subtract 125 plus 108 times 2, and I get 26.334, 
or five, depending if you round off and truncate. Bam, that's it for this problem. I hope you enjoyed that because it was a blast, right? Goodbye.